coming up at number five. It's Skittles! At number K, A, Cookie Chano! At number 23, Shakira! Number 24, Carrie A. Hacksaw! Madison still loves Carrie A. Hacksaw. Everybody loves Carrie A. Hacksaw. Number 30, it's the Romaniacs! Number 37, Rona Ruin! At 60 KB, her goggles have their own Facebook page, Heidi Bolton! At number 68, Moby Nip! At number 78, Soul Power Rejected Soul! At number 99, Becky the Butcher! Making her first tournament appearance, number 716, Zote! And last but not least, at number 9, 99, Cat Scratch Fever! Thank you for the Ted Nugent rip. Ladies and gentlemen, these are your crew, City Bruiser All-Stars! At this time, please welcome to the floor, representing the Queen City, from the 5-1-3, the Cincinnati! Roller Girl! Black Sheep! Number 5, Trauma! Number 11, Skater Kinney! Number 15, Dr. McDerby! Number 18, K. Lethal! Number 21, June with a Cleaver! Number 29, Ruffin the Pasta! Number 33, Buckhead Betty! Number 43, Wheezy! Number 44, Murder! Number 69, Skate Crime! Number 83, Jungle Lacey. Number 85, Hannah Outro Cinco. Number 86, Nuka. Your captain, number three, Karma Crash. And your coaches for this evening, Quad Almighty and Horatio Payne, the Cincinnati Roller Girls. All right, we are starting out the final game on day one of the North Central Regional Tournament for 2010. And we've got Cincinnati Black Sheep versus the Brew City Bruisers. That's right. And uh, we'll, get to, uh, we'll get to the uniform design here in a minute when we have a break. But we're going to kick it off right now with Kay Lethal. And she is going to be up against... That's High D Voltage of Brew City. Brew City in the gold, Cincinnati in the black. It looks like Heidi Voltage sees it right up the middle. Now we've got Trauma in the front along with... Uh, 
Drama, in, I think that's Karma Crash. <laughs> Karma Crash in the front with the two wall. Now, some of you sharp eyed viewers out there may notice that all of the Cincinnati skaters, or Cincinnati skaters, seem to be seem to have the same name. Uh, one of their beloved skaters, uh, Sadistic Sadie, could not be here. Uh, we, uh, we're not going to go into the details, but uh, because Cincinnati Roller Girls actually has a, 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 a piece uh, posted on their front page uh, explaining all the details. So if yeah. you're interested in, in the details behind Sadistic Sadie's uh, actually, non-appearance at the, actually, at the she's she's actually here. She's just not allowed to skate. Uh, she she she's not on the game roster for yeah. tonight. And Cincinnati Roller Girls, if you go to CincinnatiRollerGirls.com, you can find out the details. Uh, but in the meantime, we are going to uh, call uh, we are going to call the names by their actual names. And we've got Wheezy jamming for Cincinnati in the black. Wheezy, and, Wheezy, and Zote jamming for Bruce City. Well, and it I, looks like Bruce City picked up three points in that jam. If you're gonna if you're gonna have a Zote, you might as well have a Wheezy out there. Uh, apparently, <laughs> those are actually the the first that her. Children are named. Uh, I think it's Zoe and Taylor. Uh, now I, mean, I apologize in advance if, if uh, I've mi- mi- gotten the names wrong, but those are actually the first syllables of her children's name. So that's, well, that's where nice. the name comes. Although it does sound like a uh, like an old seventies, a really bad seventies uh, Sean Connery movie. I don't. Know. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, come on. You lay off the 70s. Man. You haven't seen Zardoz. Huh? <laughs> no. All right, we got Wheezy comes out for Lee Jammer for, Cin- for Cincinnati. And we've got Zote still stuck in the pack for Bruce City. Oh, now she is heading to the penalty box. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't catch <laughs> that. We, I was, I was, we were so wrapped up in her name, we didn't even see the penalty, unfortunately. But that's going to put Cincinnati on the power jam. Wheezy getting into the pack on a scoring pass. And carry a hacksaw track. Gets a piece of her, but forced to give ground at 20 feet. Okay, and with that, we take a look at the pack here. Really not, really very split up. Now they're, they're going to start to shake it up a little bit. Uh, Milwaukee with some very talented pack players out there. They've got uh, Kerry A. Hacksaw. They've got uh, Servant Justice. Right now we see uh, uh, Cookie Chiano mixed in that mix. Uh, Servant Justice not out there, but uh, Grace Kelly just forced out and now caught in the goat pen of Cincinnati. Now we, we saw Bruce City pushing the pace of the pack, for, g- getting up to the front of the pack. Uh, yeah, and, oh, and staying ahead. Oh, Grace Kelly just taken out by a sternum block. Uh, I believe that was Katie. Uh, that was uh, Hannah Alchocinco. <laughs> Hel- Hannah Hannah Alchocinco uh, d- doing the honors there. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> That's, that was pancake block right there, man. But, you know, all, all the, for some reason, all the Cincinnati skaters look the same to me uh, tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got Zote out of the penalty box, and Wheezy picking up another four points. I think that's going to bring the total to nine points, puts Cincinnati into the lead. So we've actually got a lead change early in the game, in the second jam. Well, I'm telling you, Bulldog, if we got through Wheezy and Zote, we'll be fine from the rest of the time here on. Right now we've got Kay Lethal lining up against... uh, Uh, Skittle, Skittle, number five, Skittle. Jam skater uh, from the Milwaukee area, actually. And uh, this is her first, uh, she's winding up her first season with uh, Bruce City Bruisers, making the All-Star team in her first year. Uh, interesting. Uh, jam, it's interesting to, to run into jam skaters because most skaters going coming into roller derby come from either roller hockey, speed skating, or figure skating. But every now and then you get a jam skater, and they're always, they, all, they have kind of a combination of all of the above uh, skills, you know, it's, but often usually not with a contact sport. Background, but there goes Kay Lethal breaking out first for lead jammer. Yep, Kay Lethal's going to be the first one through there. In the meantime, we've got Skittle looking for a little help. Rejected so, but she's going to get run out of bounds. Roughing the passer, That's <laughs> a, but you know, completely legal. Roughing the passer, the skater doing the honors with a nice shoulder. Oh no, not completely legal. That was roughing the passer. She's heading to the penalty box. <laughs> that's going to be uh, so. That's going to be four on three advantage, uh, Bruce City right now. Uh, here comes here comes Skittle on a scoring pass, going wide up the outside, but cut off. Oh, oh, that was Cat Scratch Fever coming in and hitting uh, Trauma number five for Cincinnati. Uh, oh. Trauma had position on Skittle, but uh, but nice, well, nice defensive work by Cat Scratch Fever. She uh, <laughs> got in there, cut off the blocker, and the jammer was able to get through. Now here comes she comes on a second scoring pass. Kay Lethal still struggling to get through. I believe that's her first scoring pass. Yep, I believe so. And right there, they're going to give her the signal that she's got the. You know what I? Four up, or she got the grand slam. Oh. Four points there, yeah, but you know, you know what? I don't see. I don't. That may have been her, a Skittle's initial pass. I, I may have. Uh, I may have gotten ahead of myself there. But there goes Skittle to the penalty box. 
That is a moot point. And there goes Kay yeah. Lethal through the pack again. That This time five points. So nine points so far? Yep, yep. Nine and points. Doubled the score. And I tell you right now, Bulldog, she's got the opportunity to do some – to hurt them even worse. Oh, but right there, puts herself in a bad situation. She's going to get run out of bounds immediately. Rejected soul stuck in the stuck in the goat pen, and now Moby Nips stuck in the goat pen of Cincinnati. So Cincinnati working really working the pack, working really well together. Bruce City did Bruce City did get that early lead, but Cincinnati coming back with a vengeance and taking quickly taking control of this game. Absolutely. Right now, stepping up to the line, of course, Skittle for Milwaukee sitting in. The penalty box, but we are going to get a look at Newcomb. That's uh, that's 85, actually. Hannah Altrucinco. From the, I can't see. It's hard to tell from the sheen off the numbers. <laughs> well, you can tell by the right angle in the top left hand corner of the right of the. I still can't see. One man, I'm blind. <laughs> that I is be Hannah, Al <laughs> Hannah Altrucinco, but a high D voltage and Rhoda Ruin have position where while well, serving justice, serving the bridge. Becky the Butcher stuck in the Cincinnati uh, Cincinnati goat pen. And we've got Skittles still fuming, just uh, helpless in the penalty box, watching her teammates. Well, here comes Santa Alcho Cinco do dodges around high D voltage. She did, she, she, that was very close. She did step out of bounds, but she was ahead. And most importantly, she was ahead of Cat Scratch, of, of high D voltage, but when she stepped out, so she did not get that penalty. Okay, well, we're going to see Skittle come back on the track. In the meantime, Servant Justice is going to take a seat. Uh, Becky the Butcher ends up with a big back block when they line up the black sheep wall toward the back end of the pack. But Skittle right now really cutting her teeth against some of these higher-seated uh, the higher seated uh, teams. Anna She's Alcher's not had this before. Anna Alcher single picking up a five. Grand slam. And in the meantime, Skittle once again still looking to try and get through on that pass. Jungle Lacey comes in with a hip check, driving Skittle out of bounds. But high D voltage takes Jungle Lacey out of the way. And but Skittle still has to has three more Cincinnati blockers to get past. And right now, I tell you, it's it's really hurting them because she can't. She's stopping and she's waiting for help. And Hannah uh, Ocho Cinco get the jammer for Cincinnati in the black. By the way, gets through again another five points. So Cincinnati starting. <laughs> Already starting to open up a wide lead ahead of Bruce City, the, the host, the host league, by the way. Yeah, and I tell you what, again, Skittle is she's looking for people to get in front of her, but so once in a while you got to make a play. And when you get stuck in that situation, she's killing a lot of precious time and letting them put up a lot of precious, precious points, Bulldog. We well, you've got Bruce City back at full strength. The penalty box emptied out. And that last pass, no one's going to pick up any more points, but another big jam, three big jams in a row for Cincinnati. And, you know, the thing that's interesting about this to me is uh, Skittle and uh, Jukebox come from the similar area, from the same jams, getting types of backgrounds. But Skittle's still a very straightforward skater. You don't see the same footwork uh, that you see out of Juke. And sometimes I, think you, sometimes I think somebody just needs to say, turn it loose and just let it go how it feels. We've got number 18 up at the line at the moment, and that is going to be Kay Lethal. Oh, well, I just want to point out uh, today's coverage brought to you by Laid on the Track Boot Camp and the Skate 08 Tournament this January in Hawaii. Laid on the Track uh, Boot Camp is a boot camp put on by the Hawaii, the Pacific Roller Girls. That's going to be on Kauai. That, the island hey, of Kauai. That sounds like a decent destination location. And even better, it's going to be in the middle of January, which is going to be the dead of winter for most of the Northern Hemisphere. Oh, for all, I think all of the Northern Hemisphere. But in Hawaii, it's going to be nice and warm, and they're going to be having a boot camp for three days, followed by a tournament, the Skate 08 Tournament. So if you, if you get a chance, go check out the Hawaii, uh, the Pacific Roller Girls, and, they're going to, and you're going to have a good old time in January. All right, Kay Lethal is going to get herself through the front of the pack. Uh, Zote having a hard time back there. Again, this is actually a real good test for for Milwaukee. Bruce City uh, really going to see some defense uh, that you're going to face anytime you've got a top three, four, five seed. And speaking of defense, we were seeing Karma Crash and Trauma. Karma Crash number three, Trauma number five, both in the black for Cincinnati, work in the front of the pack. But now, Bruce City finally opening up that hole. Zote getting out, but Kay Lethal already a full lap ahead of Zote. So she's already got points on the board. Zote 
moving into scoring position, but once again, Kay Lethal is the lead jammer, and she can shut this down anytime she wants to. But she's going to choose not to. We're, we normally see us uh, hit it and quit it, as they say. Uh, but she's not going to do that. It's point, also known as point protection. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, and we want you to know if you're going to score points, always be protected. But, uh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, a oh. tactical error there. She, she doesn't call it off when she could have, and, and where a lot, of, a lot of people might have. You know, I'm not going to question the, tact, the strategy or this early in the game. But she gets, she pays the price, gets that <laughs> cutting the track major, heads to the penalty box. No lead jam. We're going to finish that at the jam. And, uh, yeah, we're going to ride this out. This is a chance for Milwaukee to do something here, and it looks like they've set themselves up. Uh, they've got they've got two of the Cincinnati girls trapped at the back, and they're at a, nearly a stop. And, yeah, it doesn't take much to get through that bulldog when the uh, speed differential is reduced to what we saw. Nice work by Bruce City, immediately responding to the situation and trapping. Two, they actually trapped two, two Cincinnati skaters, uh, Karma Crash and Drew in the Passer, in the goat pen, and they stopped the pack to a standstill. And then Zote able to pick up a, some more points on that pass, already bringing the score up to 21 points. For, for Bruce City. So that's a big leap forward for the ladies in gold. Yeah, well, I mean, it was kind of like, we're sitting at like, what, 40 to 6 or something like that, and all of a sudden it's a game. Hey, they're right, you they're right love back that. in this. You know, all it takes is one power jam. That's that's the power of the power jam. Oh, no, I oh, know. And we've got Rejected Soul stepping up for Milwaukee. Uh, Cincinnati still serving time. Their jammer still serving time. Uh, she's going to finish this penalty out. And uh, we're in the power. We're in a uh, official timeout right now. Uh, that was uh, some peculiar. Moby <laughs> Nips looked like she substituted in. Uh, I'm not sure what happened there. Possibly the wrong skater sent to the box because it's a little early for a skater to be getting sent out on a seven, getting seven trips to the box. <laughs> you, you'd have to be pretty good or pretty bad to be able to do that. <laughs> I'm not sure which. All right, but we are going to start out uh, once again. Power jam. K. Lethal in the penalty box for Cincinnati. Cincinnati in the black. Ruff and the pass are also in the penalty box as a blocker for Cincinnati. Moby Nips in the penalty box in the gold for Bruce City. So it's going to be four on no three on three in the pack with a power jam. Rejected Soul in the jammer cap for Bruce City. And we're going to see Rejected Soul come up on the pack. She's the only jammer on the track at the moment. And here we see the charge. And we're going to see if they can get her enough help to get her through. Of course, Black Sheep responding appropriately as everybody speeds up. Well, heck, let's pick up the speed. Let's run this thing. All right, that was a nice work. Uh, that is sk Skittle open. Oh, no. Sk Skittle came in and moved Skater Kinney out of the way and moved now in the goat pen. But, uh, oh, Kate Lethal out of the penalty box. But uh, what I was saying is Rejected Soul gets up, gets forward, but Jungle Lacey and Buckhead Betty at the on the front wall. And there's a big hip check. Sends Rejected Soul for a spin, and now she's at the back of the back. But so is Kay Lethal. Yeah, we've got Cookie Chiano coming off the track. It looked like she threw a chicken wing out there. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. Uh, so, and we're going to bring it to a stop. Moby Nips standing up in the penalty box, but nevertheless, Bruce, oh, looks like both teams in the same situation. Two blockers in the penalty box, but one blocker each standing up. That's uh, Ruff and the Passer and Ruff and the Passer and Skater Kinney in the penalty box for Cincinnati in the black. Moby Nips and Cookie Chano in the penalty box for Bruce City. And at this point, we got lined up for the Black Sheep. It's Dr. McDerby as well as Heidi Voltage. Heidi Voltage actually a transfer from Windy City. She was there for a very short period of time. That's why they have a Shaka Conduit. They used to have Shaka Conduit and Heidi Voltage. Yeah, and actually, as as uh, Val has reminded me, she she did start with the Chica the Chi Town Sirens, which are of course are now known as the Outfit. Then Windy City, and now it's, but Milwaukee is where she's skated the majority of her time. Doctor McDerby stuck behind a two wall. That's a uh, Moby Nips and and Servant Justice, and here comes a. Uh, here comes high D voltage at the front of the back. Dodges past Karma Crash. Little help from Becky the Butcher at the front of the back, but now the lead jammer, high D voltage, Brew City. Yeah, and I tell you, high D voltage has really been a nice boost of energy for them. Uh, she's been a really, she's been a really vital part of this team. Her, uh, she comes over from Chicago, and then Carrie Haxa comes over from Madison in the same season, and immediately that impacts their travel team. That was a, some nice work. We're seeing some great blocking from Servant Justice. Becky the book, Butcher in a, really in a support role for Servant Justice. 
and, and just what we saw just now, be- serving justice, using Becky the Butcher as ammunition, and <laughs> just taking her and throwing her across the track in perfectly in time to catch the jammer. <laughs> That's uh, Karma. No, sorry. That is Dr. McDerby, the Cincinnati jammer, and we saw her take a big spill. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I tell you, uh, Serving Justice is a very, very smart, smart skater, also a former jam skater, and uh, has some really great footwork, obviously a very dominating uh, pivot and inside blocker. And another, uh, Bruce City, right back in this game, just two jams, and they're only 12 points behind. They were way, way behind, I think almost close to 30 points behind at, at one point. Uh, more than 30 points yep, behind. over 30. And now now just 12 points separating in just the space of two jams. That was one power jam. But that jam right that we just saw there, that was a, that was a, not a power jam. So they just controlled Dr. McDerby, held her in the pack, and they, they just were some, able to put some points on the board. And Louise steps up for the Black Sheep, as well as Carrie A. Hacksaw. The Bruce City Bruisers, and right now you're going to see you're going to get a real good shot of Carrie A. Hacksaw and her ability to run laterally and just kind of oh, until that happens. Well, <laughs> and you can't run if you're cut. on the ground. Yeah, that's true. So nice, some nice blocking by Cincinnati. Carrie A. Hacksaw fights her way past fights her way past Trauma. Trauma trying to reel her back in, but Carrie A. Hacksaw a little bit too fast for her. Catches, gets out of the pack for lead jammer. And we've got but we've got Wheezy trying to get out of the pack. Zote comes in, and now it's Rejected is that Romaniac? Uh, Romaniac? Yeah, Romaniac. You're right. Taking her down, taking her down at the top of the nice teamwork there. One hit, and then the other one cleans house. Yeah, absolutely right. And that nice pop at that end of that hit where the knees come up and just lift somebody off the ground. I love that. Oh, a nice, nice hit right there. That was jammer on jammer. Carry a hacksaw, taking <laughs> taking out, uh, taking out. Uh, not Dr. McDerby. Weezy. 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 She's got Weezy. Richard Petty's number on there, man. It's easy to remember. <laughs> and that's, this is two jams in a row. The Cincinnati, we saw the Cincinnati jammers just breezing their way through the pack, but now we have two jammers in a row, unable to get out of the pack so far, and Bruce City just starting to, starting to dominate the game in the last three jams. And let's watch here and see what Carrie A. Hacksaw... What she sees is what she's going to do. Obviously, she's got a pack in front of her. She's going to make her pass. I think she's going to clear that. And she's going to she's going to ask for some love for the fans as she calls that off. All right, nice work. Dodges right around Jungle Lacey and Skate Crime. And get, picks up another four points. And now only three points separating the two. Nine points picked up by Carrie Hacksaw. And now it's, only, now it's a three-point game. So Bruce City right back into this. We've got Skittle lining up against Newcomb. Skittle for Bruce City in the gold, Newcomb in the black for Cincinnati. Absolutely, and you're, you're right about that, Bulldog. I believe that Cincinnati's picked up about a point. And we're still, it uh, looks like we got an official timeout. And right now we've got Newcomb standing up there for the Black Sheep. As we said, it's also Skittle out there for the Bruce City Bruisers. Um, they are waiting. waiting. Okay. So I, I just want to give a big shout out to our presenting sponsor for DNN for this tournament. That is Fast Girl Skates. Fast Girl Skates, the first brick and mortar derby shop. Skater owned, skater operated. That is, but that is La Petite Mort and Wiley Peyote of the Rat City Roller oh. Girls running that, running the show there. You, it's a great place to just stop by, have a, you know, have a chat, talk Dude, derby. It's Seattle, every place is a good place to stop by. I <laughs> Any love place that that's indoors. City. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> no. Well, nine months out of yeah, year. Yeah. All right. Fast Girl Skates. Go to www.fastgirlskates.com. They are the presenting sponsor. We. DNN thanks them, and it's a great shop, and we're proud to have them on board. Here we go. We've got Newcomb going against Skittle. Hey, that jam, that jam took a while to get started, but here we go. Newcomb quickly out of the pack, not the lead jammer, and then Skittle picks up lead jammer, and she can she, there she goes, starts to call it off, and, and she's going to steal head it. And shoulders and toes, and toes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, I don't know that, that song. you got to get that big jam call off thing going in there. They don't miss it. All right, so but that is going to be a scoreless jam. What does that mean, Bob? It means uh, the score didn't matter. <laughs> means we're still stuck at forty-two thirty-nine. I mean, if, if you call drink. that stuck, considering I believe it was like forty-one to six or something like that. Don't you play the DNN drinking yeah. game? No, I, I don't know. I'm, 
I just, just don't know the rules. I just get bloated and gassy. <laughs> oh, thank you. That was uh, a little more information than we need. Well, but. and you know what? As long as we're talking about that, it's permanently imprinted on DVD by Hinkley Designs. Hinkley oh. Designs, our production company here this evening, that is bringing you this webcast. Beautiful picture that you're seeing that DNN is broadcasting tonight. So a little interesting thing happened there. Kay Lethal, one of we, a frequent jammer for Cincinnati, stepped in to take an intentional minor, but they already had two blockers in the penalty box. So it was actually they actually pulled her off, and they had now they have two blockers on the track because if she had gotten the intentional minor, she still wouldn't have been able to get, go to the penalty box. <laughs> and so they unpoodled her. They depoodled. She was it. depoodled. She was depoodled. That's, That's the first depoodle I've ever seen. Yeah, the claws removed from the cougar. <laughs> All right, we've got Wheezy jamming for Cincinnati. She gets a big hit, a shoulder check from serving Justice right into uh, right into a positional block from Zote, and of course there's and of course there's Romaniac oh, coming in with man. the oh, but she she catches Jungle Lacy, but that oh. uh, that actually opened up that outside line. Wheezy able to get out of the pack, picks up lead jammer. No, she was already lead jammer. Four points on the board for Cincinnati. That big hit by serving Justice. We're brought to you by Servant Justice. That's right. <laughs> justice is served. Uh, justice is served. Yeah. She is judge, jury, and prosecution. High D voltage also getting through the pack, picking up match a matching four points. But there, but there is Wheezy in the pack for another scoring pass. Stuck behind Servant Justice and Romaniacs are on the two wall. There comes uh, here comes uh, Hannah Alcho Cinco trying to break the but Servant Justice easily just sh just taking maintaining control of the front of the pack. Just sho really shoving Anna Alcho Zingo out of the way, and you know, I mean, just that's just raw physics. <laughs> that's just raw roller dude. <laughs> Actually, we saw Romaniac out there, a key player. She's done a nice job for Milwaukee. She's got a sister that skates or had skated in Seattle. That, that would be Comet Atcha. I'm glad. Actually. I was actually glad you were going to finish that for me because I All didn't right. know what her sister's name was. <laughs> I forgot. Well, but I've met her. Interesting. They, they actually, you know, if you saw them side by side, you would swear that they are identical twins. In fact, I, I came out here, and every time every time I come out in this to this part of the part of the country, you don't and, let I, you and I run often. across Romaniac, I always go, come Wait a second. What, what are you doing flying out to this part of the country and running across a Romaniac anyway? That's, That's right, wrong. But, but, you gotta but, drive better than that. But they're actually they're not twins, than Apple, by the way. They, no. They're actually they're actually separated by a year. I don't, I don't remember which one's older, <laughs> but they're actually a year apart. <laughs> I guess they're separated Just, by birth. Well, yeah, uh, you know whatever. Yeah. They have different <laughs> last names: Atcha and Ak. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, we think the father was the same name. <laughs> Stop it. Stop. All right. Well, that is, that is a team timeout take, being taken by Cincinnati, and not a bad choice because it was, because Bruce City really has a lot of momentum. Cincinnati was able to put some more points on the board, but that was the first point on the board in, in about in about four jams, four jams in a row, Bruce City coming back. And Cincinnati, though, able to put some points on the board, but nevertheless unable to stop uh, Bruce City from continuing to, to accumulate points. So since it's probably a good decision, try and break up that Bruce City momentum. Yeah, absolutely. You get, I mean, oh, another it's, a, it's another false start. Oh no, that was now that was a tactical, a straight up tactical error. Rota Ruin did a false start, and it was pretty blatant. But uh, but she failed to just, give ground. Yeah. Something we that is just that is a self inflicted injury. If if she get if she, of course if she gives ground, allows the other jammer to get ahead of her, and then resumes taking a you know moving forward then she gets a, a minor but she did not give ground entered the pack and immediately got a major so that was uh, that was pretty that, it was actually kind of a strange start because she started uh, you know kind of with that running and it's like she kind of hesitated and then she kept up the pace but that's actually the second time we have seen that today and you're right it's not something you see very often because it's an easy one to fix but we're see we're seeing a lot of smart gameplay by all of the teams out here Instant reaction. The the pack instantly aware that they're on the power kill, and and the the Bruce City that is Bruce City instantly aware they're on the power kill and moving to the front of the pack and pushing the pace, making the making that power jammer work to get pick up those uh, those points and trying to convert that power jam. Yeah, absolutely. This is textbook, of course, at this point, except for that part where you have the wall set up and then you end up pulling it apart to let her through the inside. Well, but was, oh, it worked out. <laughs> Well, that was that was Sin City drawing back, and uh, and the teams have to now they may have actually accumulated a, a minor or two, but nevertheless that that did split the pack, 
and that forced these Bruce City skaters to allow the Cincinnati skater, uh, the Cincinnati jammer, to get ahead. But uh, oh, do we have? Yeah, she's she power has does a done, jammer switch up. She, yes, that's right. She uh, ends up uh, getting called out of the game, and uh, that's going to allow Rona Ruin back out onto the track. And right now, Milwaukee once again in a very good situation to put some points up here on the board. And with everything almost at a complete stop. Oh, look at that! So you got one shot landed, bang! Right there. Amazing. That is Skater Kenny, who's been with Cincinnati for quite a while. And boy, if she just doesn't land us. We talk about speed differential, how hard it is to hit somebody when you're hardly moving. Uh, apparently not for Skater Kenny. Well, you know, I mean, if you can, if you can, if you can accelerate really fast on, on short notice, yeah, then, uh, they didn't leave her a lot of space, so she didn't. She she had to slip through that hole pretty quickly, or she's gonna get popped. And Skater Kenny, wise enough to turn around and watch it coming, pops her. But uh, in the meantime, rejected soul is uh, the only jammer out on the track. She's already through the pack, and uh, she's your lead jammer for Milwaukee. That's right, and I think what happened, I, I, I believe what happened there, what I saw there, was we had that split pack situation, like I was saying, but as the pack was split, I did see the uh, Cincinnati Jammer actually uh, shoulder check one of the Bruce City skaters, and that may be why she got she got an out-of-play major, possibly. Uh, we have to review the tape, but unfortunately we don't have instant replay. And there we see Rejected Soul scratching and clawing to get away through that pack. They were at almost a stat cell, and then we're going to have a, a hip check. Uh, that was trauma taken down the Rejected Soul. Yeah, that was putting trauma on Rejected Soul. Man, it was kind of it was kind of like a booty block hip check. She throws out there and just landed that dart. Right on the bullseye. But guess what we just had? We had another lead change. Bruce City now ahead by six points over Cincinnati. So, and, that, and by the way, a lead change means you take a shot of, okay. of uh, your Kool Aid, some fruit punch, whatever your, your beverage uh, of choice, water if you got Kool -Aid, it. Kool Aid's always a tough choice. You know, it's got history. Oh, and a cool, refreshing glass of iced tea. Take uh, a shot of that, you know. <laughs> Yeah, a rock, a rock here, he, a rock here, prior tender extraordinaire behind us. That's it. We're on, we're on DNN family. <laughs> yeah, DNN family channel. Oh, right. well, no, that is high D voltage. Your liquor recipes, huh? What's that? <laughs> what's up, your liquor recipes? High D voltage jamming against uh, Hi Hannah Alcho Cinco of Cincinnati. High D voltage hits the pack on a scoring pass. She's the lead jammer. Calls off the jam. Hit it and quit it. Picks up three unanswered points. Three more points for the Bruce City Bruisers, bringing the score to 61 to 52. I tell you, this has been amazing because Milwaukee looked like they came out here and totally laid an egg in the first five or six jams, and you know it starts out they're losing by about 35 points, and all of a sudden, about three jams later, they've made that up, and we're getting closer here to the end of the first half with six minutes, and they've actually got an. They've got a nine-point lead. It's amazing how long I had to stop and actually figure that out. That is sad. All right, but <laughs> that, that, is, that is exhaustion. <laughs> well, we've got another team timeout getting called by Cincinnati. Now, uh, keep in mind, uh, th this is this is actually a pretty Not close. Think about it. Keep this in mind. Are you ready, Bob? I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I just want to hit This me, is huh? actually a pretty close matchup. Right. Uh, Cincinnati coming in seated number four. Bruce City coming in seated number five. So, uh, really, I mean, it's it's yeah. kind of a and when they're that when they're one seat apart. Yeah, it's, it's you're right. kind of a toss up. I mean, because we're gonna because it could, it could easily go either way. But nevertheless, this would be a minor upset if uh, if. If Milwaukee breaks through into the into the quarterfinals, no, I think that's an excellent point. Sorry, I mean, semifinals. Yeah, uh, but that was an, it's an excellent point because what ends up happening is, you know, they come out and you expect a close game. Like I said, all of a sudden it was all Cincinnati uh, for about the first but first seven eight minutes, and then all of a sudden Milwaukee storms. I mean, storms back through this. It's been an amazing amount of points in really a fairly short period of time. Oh, it's been it's been all all Milwaukee for the la for at least the last seven jams. Well, we're looking it's at been, yeah, since they were since Milwaukee was down to like six points or whatever, Cincinnati has picked up like 10, 11 points. Well, I mean, remember they were they were I think it was at one point at early on it was six to forty two. Yep. Milwaukee in the hole, 36 points behind. Now they are nine points ahead. I know. And it's in crazy. just the space of about 10 minutes. Yeah, it's crazy. You know. 
Uh, but, uh, but, I mean, Cincinnati paying the price with a lot of jammers in the penalty box, a lot of blockers in the penalty box. So they've been giving up a lot yeah, of penalties. So absolutely. Penalty, huge factor in this game. Yeah, absolutely. And here we go. That is, <laughs> that's Zote once again jamming, and she ducks and dodges right around oh. trauma. And Karma Crash gets through the pack and picks up lead jammer. Still stuck in the pack. That's Hannah Alcho Cinco. Grace Kelly gets position and it's puts a stopper in the bottle, keeping the genie in the bottle, as they say. Nice. Uh, I like well, it. I made that up. Uh, no, it was I good. Keep it. That Run cliche. with it. Run with it. Yep, there you go. You got one. <laughs> And, and yeah, I tell you, and here's mine because it's all a glamour to be the jammer. Sometimes we don't focus enough about what's going on in the pack. And uh, but obviously the pack play here today has all oh, been ex has been extraordinary. But yeah, there we go. As uh, Bulldog is, just hits himself on the top of that, that's exactly what you're thinking at that point. How did I do that? Since well, Cincinnati going to the penalty box now is Bruce City on the power jam. That's Hannah Alcho Cinco, the jammer for Cincinnati, He's cooling her wheels in the sin bin. And there goes Zote on another pass, picking up another grand slam for Bruce City and just extending that lead. We've got, we, we're 25 minutes into the first period, and now it looks like Milwaukee is, is starting to pull away from Cincinnati. Yeah, and I tell you, Zote, as much as, as Milwaukee has, got, has gotten control of the speed in the pack, uh, it's, it's, it's turning kind of a fracas right now. Uh, she hit that thing, she hit that thing at, she hit that thing at a pretty good speed, but she tucked it to the inside where all the defense, the two or three players that were out on the track actually were, and she gets totally pinned in, and she's done. And so I tell you what, why don't, let's let, should we just throw a couple of more sponsors out there. Of course, we want to thank, we want to say thanks to, I want to personally say thanks to Five on Five Magazine because anytime I send an article to them and I sign it justice, they run it. That's really? how it works. What is what is going through their minds? Well, you know, because Justice always writes well. It's easy, but they actually do. They actually do print some of the stuff I send them. To. Oh, I, I, you know. Oh, I, I, oh, Justice, I can understand. I thought I was I was shocked that they printed what you wrote. No, no well, I, I signed Justice's name. That's how it works. But that's Five on Five Magazine, <laughs> the yep. official magazine of the Women's Flat Track Derby Association, and the event we are watching today, the 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 North Central Regional WFTDA 2010 uh, Regional Tournament. And there we go, Rejected Soul picking up lead jammer for Bruce City, and just Bruce City, just Bruce City continuing to tear away at Cincinnati. Cincinnati almost coming apart at the heels. Hannah Aucho Cinco back in the mix, but she is surrounded by uh, that's a uh -huh. Skittle Sharkira and Moby Nips just completely putting a lockdown on Hannah Aucho Cinco. And we got, you see Skittle out there playing defense. She's throwing, she's throwing the old back shoulder out there a couple of times, knocking, knocking the jammer around. But uh, that's going to be the end of this jam. One interesting thing about this that kind of dawned on a few of us just before this whole thing gets started is everybody that leaves here this weekend for the championships is going to be, they're going to have like five weeks until they play. So, I think it's going to be a little more than that. It's going to be like seven weeks for this tournament because there's there are still three more regional tournaments to go. But but and then a significant advantage, yeah. But significant advantage over like the South Central that doesn't play until like about a month from today. That's right. Well, I mean, it's it's not it's not logistically not really uh, feasible to to play all four. No, 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 no. Today. But I'm just saying it's but, gonna it's it's still interesting how how that can affect this. It it does it it could potentially have an effect, but but the but. The be way negative. It's, it's always at, at a minimum of four weeks between the last regional. So every single team has four weeks. And you really got to say, if you're not ready in four weeks, seven, another three weeks isn't going to help. No, you're right. Uh, injury injury might help. But actually, a number of these teams I found interesting, that number of teams playing here today are actually going to be playing, maybe un, they might be scrimmages or unsanctioned, but they're going to be playing bouts against other major teams from other, uh, from other uh, regions prior oh. to the championship. Okay, well, while we were yapping, Dr. McDerby comes out and she no, it's just me picks up four points for a, a Heidi Voltage is in the pack. I don't believe she's actually exited the pack yet. So Dr. McDerby putting some points on the board and trying to and really working to rally Cincinnati. Cincinnati has, has Heidi Voltage trapped in the back of the pack, but they don't have any blockers. They don't have any blockers, so they so so Dr. McDerby easily getting getting taken out by Servant Justice, and now now she puts on some fancy footwork, gets around Servant Justice, but that but now gets stopped by Becky the Butcher briefly though pushes pushes that twenty foot and gets out of the pack. 
Yeah, the thing that's been really interesting for the number of points that have been scored, even for Milwaukee's comeback, there's been some situations where you see the jammers uh, with the speed differential set up for them, and they're they're hitting the wrong spots, and they're just absolutely getting hammered. I think when they should be to, blazing through there. I think she tried to go head to head, or rather hip to hip, yeah. with serving justice. I wouldn't want to. And Doctor do McDerby obviously just bounced off like a tennis ball off a brick wall. <laughs> but serving justice is at well over six feet on skates. Anyway, once again, just plain, just pure physics uh, at work there. Uh, you don't want to go. Uh, you know, it, there's. Trust me. You're not going to need. Get... A, you need a lot of inertia, or you need to have. Uh, or serving justice has to be balancing on one wheel. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> to pretty make much. That work. She, uh, she's an excellent player. The thing about serving justice, she's just so incredibly fleet-footed and mobile. All right, but uh, Cincinnati able to put some points on the board, but Milwaukee at 80 points, 14 points ahead of Cincinnati. Now, it, it, slowly extending that lead. They're not. They're not. They're not breaking away just yet, but they are slowly adding to that, adding to that differential. So, Brew City really, uh, really doing a great job. Almost out of time, less than uh, less than a minute, just 27 seconds on the clock in this official timeout. Well, and I tell you, it's one of those things where Milwaukee could have blown this thing wide open uh, when they were in power jams, and they just haven't done it. They've had that. They've they've not had a situation where the jammers have been been able to come through and, ma and ev everybody matched up right and direct traffic on how to get through there and again you've got you've got that huge speed differential you've got that hole they're looking to build you you hit the wrong spot and once you're slowed down to nothing it's game on all right uh, well, one thing i should know you may have noticed uh since i take a set what appeared to be a second timeout but i'm looking over at the scoreboard and it looks like they, they went down to one but they're back at two so that, that uh, now that may have been an official challenge. Unfortunately, we didn't get a report of that. That could that also sometimes what happens is you, you go out and you call you call a timeout to do an official challenge, and the head referee actually has al has either already figured it out or sides with you and decides chooses not and decides it was a referee error. Yeah. You know, the, occasionally referees make a mistake, but they usually catch them and they will correct it as soon as they catch that mistake. And you know, so and, yeah, and so they will not out. charge the yep. timeout. Yep. Anyway, but I mean, I'm just mentioning that because that could be a crucial factor later in the game. So Cincinnati still has two timeouts, uh, but uh, Bruce City has yet to use a timeout. And what do we got going on on the I'm track watching, right now? I'm watching Kay Lethal, who's like bouncing, like, come on, let's get on with this so I can take my poodle. And oh, but, oh but she gets the same, waved off. Same she got away. Same anyway. exact thing that happened, but this time this she took the some, poodle. Yeah, some kind so of weird. She owes a minute in the yeah, penalty. She box. owes him a poodle. But this is a power jam situation right now for Cincinnati. And Hannah Alto Cinco. Um, oh, she sees daylight. Moby nips nips her in the butt, but she manages to bounce off and still and maintain control of her skates. Gets out of the pack. Lead jammer for Cincinnati. Of course, uh, Hannah Alto Cinco, formerly known as Hannah Barbaric. Uh, but I love, I love the fact that you changed your name based on where she's from. And it's oh. also possible that, uh, well, there is an Anna Barbera that skates for uh, Slaughter County Roller Vixens. That is Anna Barbera. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that, well, why, that, why, why, I said that was, she's, she, it was Hannah Barbaric, and she's gone by Hannah Ocho Sinking. Right now, <laughs> right now, Bulldog getting schooled on the NFL. And the Cincinnati team. Oh, oh, we're talking a little bit Chad Johnson here. <laughs> Chad Ocho Cinco from Cincinnati. But okay. Interesting. You got, got, you got that thing in. You, you got to watch more, watch more NFL, trivia. man. Useless trivia. <laughs> no, no. Dude, NFL is not useless trivia. <laughs> I, I know. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. And uh, actually, I, I'm not a big. Uh, I, I I don't even know what sport you're talking about. Football is uh, that? Yeah, I, is that with a round ball or a a, a brown ball or? <laughs> Why don't you explain that? Hannah Hannah Barbaric changed the no, name. No, no, I, I had it. Hannah already, Barbaric dude. started with Gem I, City Roller Girls in Dayton, Ohio. She then moved to Cincinnati because she wanted to do more national skating, the more national gameplay, a little bit more competitive league. She then decided because once Chad Ocho, or Chad Johnson wanted to change his name to Ocho Cinco and the NFL forbid him because he already had too many jerseys printed up that said Johnson and his number is 85. Her number is 85. She's a fierce competitor just like he is. And it was so ridiculous that he legally changed his name to 
Ocho Cinco because he's number 85. So then in about, I, I want to say last season, it was part of like Cincinnati's mad, awesome, awesome, awesome uh, marketing campaign was to say, you know, they, they try to run a thing with the Cincinnati Bengals about has, uh, has Ocho Cinco blocked you? Da, 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 da. And it, they did the same thing with Ocho Cinco, number 85, Hannah Barbaric. So people like me that are Derby Dork stalkers, we know her as Hannah Barbaric from Gem City, Purple Colors. But then we watched her grow up into the amazing, brilliant powerhouse that she is as Ocho Cinco in black and white. And yeah, it was it was it was all tied in to her local NFL team. Okay, well, uh, I want to I want to get in some sponsors here. We are at the halftime. Bruce City only maintaining a six point lead. So Cincinnati making up some ground at the uh, just before the half, 80 to 74. With uh, and we'll be back in about 14 minutes. But first, very quickly, I want to get some more. I want to get some more, some more sponsors in because uh, uh, we missed out. But we or you missed out. I gotta say. Uh, but if you're if your derby league is experiencing growing pains, which with over growing 450 pains, leagues in the United States and over a 100 leagues outside of the United States. There's, there's a lot of leagues out there that are probably experiencing this. But you, if you're listening right now, Have Derby Will Travel can help. You can get a free consultation at HaveDerbyWillTravel.com. Also, Does that a big include th- physical? Also, a big thanks to Sin City Skates. The original Derby-owned skate shop is also DNN's very first sponsor. Did you know uh, that? Yeah, I did. I did know that, and I know that they support DNN and everything they do. That's right. You can buy skates from a skater at SinCitySkates.com. And... You know that Trish the Dish is not going to let you out of there without doing that. And, of course, we think we've also got Cruise Skate Shop. This is exciting for me. Uh, I used to share a booth with her with Flying Squirrel once in a while. And that's Motley Cruise from, uh, from uh, former Bay Area Derby, Derby Girl Skater. And she has got a Derby-owned and operated uh, uh, store, Skate Shop, down in San Francisco. She's got a new Sacramento location that's going to open on September 17th. You can find her online at cruiseskateshop.com. Cruise, just like in the band, C R U Z, skateshop.com. And throw a shout out there to uh, Motley. And good luck in Sacramento with the new store. We've also got Rockstar Skates, Derby owned in St. Louis. And you get free shipping on any or, or any order over fifty dollars. That's this weekend only. Got to use the coupon code though. That's D N N. I think we know what that stands for. At RockstarSkates.com. And and one more. We we got one more for you. Derby for all. That is a Derby owned shop in Minneapolis, and they are ready to serve you online at DerbyForAll.com. That's Derby the number four all. Dot com. And, and thank you very much to all these sponsors for supporting DNN. Well, absolutely. If it wasn't, and if it wasn't for DNN, well, you wouldn't be texting right now. You wouldn't be seeing some of these images. You wouldn't be hearing the lucid sound. The <laughs> lucid, lucid sound of my voice. All right. But, but we, we have about 10 minutes left in the halftime Don't before we come back with the second half of this, what's shaping up to be a very exciting second half between uh, Milwaukee's Brew City Bruisers and Cincinnati's Black Sheep, the Cincinnati Roller Girls. Oh, that's right. You could see what is a big shakeup in how this whole thing comes down from what, compared to last year and the way they were seated. But uh, that's going to be in about 10 minutes, folks. And uh, So signing off for now, but we'll be right back to you. This is Bulldog. And this must be Bob Noxious. Who's, who's that? I don't know. Matt Roland Dolls, Bob Noxious. And we're going to be coming back to you in about 10 minutes. With the second. Lead Shower, Bright City Roller Girls. <laughs> 
It's like there's a tuba band playing in here. At least it's not like when the when the World Cup was on. It just sounds like a like a bunch of angry angry foreigners are coming out through my surround sound system. Am I the only one that thinks that it's appropriate for someone from the Windy City to have a big tube blowing a whole bunch of hot wind? I, I mean, really, I'm not complaining. Blow, brave Ruzella. Blow. You're going to be coming back from half here in a minute. It's three minutes until we get this thing started. Yet again, your score on the board, 74 to 80. Cincinnati came out hot in this one, and then they got pegged leg with penalty trouble. And that it gave the advantage to Brew City, Gloria. It certainly did. And Brew City is definitely looking to capitalize on that. Interested to see how these two teams adjust for the second half right now. Cincinnati has to figure out a way to stay out of the box and keep bodies on the floor. And I'm, and I'm wondering what Bruce is going to go with. A pirate made noise again. Pirate made noise. That was me. I did that. A little ace is high for you. This is how I actually made it from Milwaukee to Green Bay last night. Two hour drive, and I think I made it in an hour and 15 minutes. Pedal, you said metal, I did. Here. I did. Doc tried to race me. Uh, Vince actually sent me a message saying eat our ducks, and I said, uh, no chance, Lance. That's how I made it to Green Bay last night with Vince Hannity in my passenger seat. Uh, yeah. Once he wasn't in your lap, he was all right. right. When the Palooza guy blows at you, is that a boo or is that a yay? It's kind of like when Daryl Johnson gets the ball when he's playing for the Dallas Cowboys and everyone goes, ooh, that's just a good thing. Take it as such. Not that any of you out there are probably derby versions, but if you are, there's some great explanations of what the heck is going on. Our roller derby cheat sheet here in the program. You can also see some of our stunningly attractive referees from your city, uh, including All right, we are getting ready to start the second half of the Cincinnati Roller Girls versus the Milwaukee Brew City Bruisers. I'm here with Bob Noxious of the Mad Rolling Dolls. This is Bulldog. It's true. Uh, it is true, yes. <laughs> the score, 80 to 74. Brew City Bruisers starting out a little bit in the hole, but then coming back with a vengeance finish. But then Cincinnati managing to make up some of that ground, finishing only six points behind. But we're going to get started with the, what should be a very exciting second half. It's anything like the first half, Bob. Absolutely. And I tell you, before we do that, the beautiful picture that you are seeing right now that's being broadcast is being is a live a live mix, live production feed that's being run to us from Hinkley, from Natalie Hinkley's group, or Natalie uh, Hinkley Designs. And if you take a look, there should be a, a link, a hot link right underneath your your web window that will allow you to go ahead and and uh, you'll be able to go ahead and order that as you're watching it if you're enjoying what you see here. Are we good? Te technologically, are we functioning, <laughs> Bulldog? I think we are now. I had right. a, a minor technical difficulty, but I think it was me flaking. We've got the, uh, was that Zote or a ha or carry a hacksaw uh, sitting in the cooling her wheels in the penalty box. For Bruce City. Zote, yes. Zote, the jammer for Bruce City. 
And that's, that means that we've got Hannah Ochocinco, uh, which we discussed the name before. Hannah Ochocinco on the power jam, picking up a grand slam for Cincinnati. So that puts them right back into, into the driver's seat. They have changed the lead again. Well, oh, my. The, the, the reaching out to put a hit. Romaniac. Yeah, Romaniac throws a shoulder out there. I don't know exactly how they ended up calling that. But in the meantime, Cookie... Uh, how do, I'm, I'm going to get this wrong. Cookie Chano. Chano. I always do that. I, don't know, I hate that. I hate that I get that wrong. But it's Cookie Chano. Ends up uh, serving a major penalty. Swooshed off the, shushed off the track. Speaking, speaking of swoosh, Zote flies out of the penalty box. And she's right back into the thick of things. Moving in on a scoring pass. Gets a ra- Actually, uh, passes up Hannah Alchocinco, but Hannah Alchocinco already a couple of laps ahead of Zote and just casually calls off the jam and cashes uh, in though, another four points for Cincinnati. And that's good. But she did uh, actually, it looks like she got uh, what's called the, uh, the finger pointy twisty thing. <laughs> anyway, she, that, that means that she only got four points even though she was eligible oh, for that okay. jammer lap point. Okay. But one of the points she, she was both of the skaters. It was well. What ha- what that means is that the, the the skater hits her out of bounds, but goes out of bounds herself, and she and the jammer comes in ahead of the skater, so she comes back in legally, but does not actually pass the skater for her point legally. So she only uh, got four okay. points instead so of five. So that is the that is the technical definition of the ref finger pointy thingy. <laughs> That's right. Both fingers up in the air, like you just what? don't care. Exactly. Hey, Ninety, but that but you know what that puts Cincinnati right in the instant replay of the first half actually because Cincinnati came out. Came out fighting in the first half and put some distance between them and Bruce City, and a now they're doing it distance. again. Here we go, K yep. F- K Fatal. Yep, uh, that's right. It's uh, K Lethal. K Lethal. <laughs> uh, in the end, it's bad news for somebody out there. Lethal, so is, Fatal. So is Rejected Soul. Rejected Soul trying to get by. Final blocker there for the Black Sheep. She's gonna. They're gonna have to let her go. She's through. And in the meantime, oh, K Lethal takes was- a nice. Nice shoulder. Cat Scratch Fever doing yeah, the honors. Cat Scratch Fever and Kiki Chano forming a two wall at the back of the pack, and Kay Lethal is going to go ahead and fall off the jam. Bear would have been, he'd have been proud of that one. All right, and I uh, just want just want to point out what, very quickly, uh, in, in case you missed the first half, uh, all of the Cincinnati skaters appear to have the same name on the back of their jersey. That uh, is- they, it's not even an appearance. They actually do. <laughs> That's right. That, they That's have a, their show of support uh, for Sadistic Sadie, uh, Sadie not skating today. Uh, you can go to uh, CincinnatiRollerGirls.com if you would like to see the release that has been posted there by the team. That's right. A, non, a non-derby related uh, uh, issue with uh, Sadistic Sadie, but nevertheless prevented her from skating today for Cincinnati, but in a show of support. But the but Cincinnati Roller Girls, if you go to CincinnatiRollerGirls.com, you can get their they have their full statement on the front page of the board, if in case you're curious. Uh, but we are going to call it straight. There. It looks like Hannah Alchocinco jamming for Cincinnati up yeah. against Rhoda Ruin. Rhoda Ruin, who's a nice, uh, not a name we've called a lot today, but is really a very, very crucial, uh, critical player uh, for Milwaukee uh, for their. Uh, and Russian roulette. Uh, <laughs> the, I knew I'd, I knew I'd come up with the team. And I uh, just want to want to give a sh- quick shout out to Hinkley uh, Hinkley uh, P- uh, Entertainment. There, <laughs> it designs. Yeah, Hinkley Designs. Sorry, uh, they are doing the video for us, and you can also order a DVD. There's a there's a link directly below the video feed, their video stream. If you're watching right now, you can order the DVD and watch it, and for future reference, and learn and just study it, learn about Derby if you're into Derby, or if you just love Derby, you can watch some great games we're seeing today. Another game right now, Cincinnati versus Milwaukee, and Cincinnati right back into things and pulling ahead once again of uh, Bruce City Bruisers, pulling up to 95. That was Hannah Alcho Cinco doing the victory dance. A little early, but uh, you know what? Cincinnati coming out fighting like this, I, I think that's a, that's cause for celebration. Well, it, you know, it, it gets everybody fired up, and that's basically what it comes down to. So much of the time is heart morale, and uh, if if everybody feels that same energy as we saw previously. With Minnesota uh, having a great comeback against Detroit, I mean, we all know if you played sports, you know you know what it's like. Right now, Kaylee will love that. She can't. She's like Romania. Actually, can't stand still. Always stand there, bounce, 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 and waiting for the blow. And they get the whistle and they're both up and running. But it's Carrie Hacksaw finds that yep. wide open hole. The Bruce City Bruisers yeah. opening up, open and wide, and letting their jammer through and slamming the door shut. Only, but they they do have a four on two advantage. Not anymore though. The Cincinnati, uh, Cincinnati 
skaters. I keep saying Sin City. Cincinnati skaters coming out of the penalty box. So they're both teams at full strength, but Kay Lethal getting out of the back. But she's a half a lap behind Carrie Hacksaw. Yeah, I tell you, we're seeing Carrie Hacksaw out here. You know, Hacksaw might be one of the nation's best blockers, but she's an incredible jammer. Unfortunately, on that, that part of her scoring pass, she got kind of caught up, took kind of an unusual kind of back spill as they hit the tape over in the corner. Uh, just three points picked up on that jam. We've got uh, 83 to 95, 12 points separating the two teams. Hey, look at that. We're going to get a poodle, and there's a space for her. And that's Amazing. Wheezy. Amazing. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, we did see. Pause. I, I don't know if I necessarily call that a tactical error. Uh, you know, that's a. Oh uh, yeah, that's a tactical. Oh, well, you know. Uh, yeah. Well, they, yeah. I think that I think uh, they, it, they it, caught it, it the first time. It wouldn't strategically plan it. Well, you know, there you go. But kill time. Wheezy it's heading to the penalty box, but we've got Hannah Alcho Cinco jamming for Cincinnati in the black and in the gold. We've got oh, oh a rejected soul just oh. getting a, a buffeted from all directions. Roughing the Jammer. passer on that. Yeah, roughing the oh, everybody got a. I think everybody got a piece of rejected soul, but nevertheless, she comes back and, and swings wide, gets around the back, and picks up lead jammer. Beautiful work by the pack. We've got Sharkira, Cat Scratch Fever, and Cookie Chana working together, holding back the jammer. Now, Hannah Alchisingo finally did get through there, but they held back that jammer for a crucial uh, full lap, uh, enough time for Rejected Soul to get out in front, yep. get lead jammer, and get into the pack. And now she's in position. Rough on the passer has position, but there she goes. Rejected Soul calling off the jam in time to secure those points. Yeah, and I tell you, there's some nice work out there, too, by the Black Sheep. Skate cram out there. She had a sit block. She had about two girls held up. And when you're out there playing shorthand, that's the kind of play that you need from the rest of your team. Uh, making the uh, making uh, giving up points not quite as painful as they were able to play shorthand and stave off some of the damage. All right, Cincinnati calling a team timeout right now. <laughs> and uh, so we're, we're going to see a one full minute of a uh, timeout. And this is a great opportunity. What do you think we should do with that minute? Well, I think it's two minutes, actually. <laughs> it's a one, one minute for the timeout, but uh, what, what do we got here? Who is today's sponsor today? Today's coverage is brought to you by Late on the Track Boot Camp. Uh, that is, and, and in conjunction with that, the Skate 808 Tournament this January in Hawaii. <laughs> That's a skate 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 away Here, tournament. Would you like to read? Well would you like to read that? Make sure the well, the 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 late on the track boot camp is actually on Kauai, which I think is See? what Val was trying to, to was trying to say. Okay, well, uh, thanks thanks for interrupting our our spot, Val. <laughs> <laughs> We've got, but that that is a that is a lot of fun. You head out to Hawaii. Uh, the late on the track is in Kauai, and then you hop on an air taxi, head over to Hawaii, and you participate in the Skato 808, the Skato 8 tournament. That's where you all the skaters that show up. You throw the hat, name in the name in the hat, and you draw out four teams at random, and then and then they play a mini tournament right there. But here we go. High beam voltage. The jammer for Brew City breaking out of the pack for lead jammer, and we've got trauma jamming. I don't think I think this is the first time trauma's jammed for Cincinnati. Uh, yeah, yeah she, we've, we've certainly called her name enough tonight. Uh, well, she's been a, been a very effective blocker yeah, for the ladies. Yeah, the absolutely. And once in a while, you got to change things up. You know how that works, Bulldog. If something's not working, change the pace a little bit. And once in a while, you'll see a blocker get put in. And uh, But right now, Trauma not having a ton of success is Heidi Voltage. It's going to be your lead jammer, and she's putting up some points. Heidi Voltage picking up a grand slam for Bruce City. And you know this is the same. Uh, this is kind of the same dynamic we saw in the first half. We saw we saw Sin City start to pull away. They didn't pull away as far this time. Bruce City recovering quickly. Now only four points behind, and that's going to be another well, four. Only four points on that pass, but that's going to be high D voltage picking up four more points. And Trauma heading to the penalty box. The jammer for Sin City, so it's going to be another power jam. And beautiful work by the by the Bruce City pack. They're holding back. They have Jungle Lacey trapped. Oh, in the she caught pack. it. That's a good call. She caught it before she she tried to call it off to try to mask it. I think, but uh, yeah, she could, she did cut that. Good call by the refs that time. They're going to catch that. She's not able to stop play. She's going to go serve the time. But that was a jammer switch in a very short time. Trauma had only just gotten to the box, so, so only about five or ten seconds served by both jammers. And now we so now we've got both jammers back out on the track. But Trauma just completely owned by Moby Nips. So Moby Nips is forcing Trauma down, actually. And there we go. Another grand slam from Heidi Voltage. And that's going to put 
That's going to put Bruce City Bruisers in the Back lead. Another again. lead switch. And this is, again, as you said, perfect following of the very first half. Open up Cincinnati, puts up a big score. All of a sudden, Bruce City just capitalizes on uh, the mismatch in numbers out on the track. And out of nowhere, boom, 15, 20 points. And we're going to see, uh, it's going to be uh, Kay Lethal again. And she's going to be out here to poodle for us. How many poodles can you take before you just, you just I, don't I, come I, back? How many poodles can you take before the whole bin of poodles is empty? Yeah, well, I mean, I've seen, I've seen uh, Kay Lethal. This is, I think, the third yeah, poodle no, you're right, I've though. seen her take. You're right. uh, I you're mean, right. actually takes. She had that one aborted effort where she actually was pulled off the track. Uh, the unpoodle or the depoodling, and uh -huh. I think I think she's got. So she, I mean, she's got to be. She's got to be getting close to that seven uh, trips to the box mark if she if she takes this poodle. So uh, we're gonna see a poodle cougar intentional minor. You know, I mean, it's, it's no some way. people actually have physical reactions when they hear the word poodle. And, <laughs> and, and I'm not talking about the, any of the people sitting in my near, in my near in my <laughs> physical reactions to the word poodle. It's a safe word, man. No, but it's a, it's taking an intentional minor. Is that is actually what it is? People have cutesy phrases. Come on. People do have cute, cutesy code words for for that kind of stuff. But it's taking an intentional minor. It's a it's a it's a tactical ploy. You want to get your jammer into the box to clear her minors so that she can jam in the next jam and then uh, with a clean slate. So uh, that so that's the purpose of it. Uh, but I mean, I, like I said, at this at this point, Kay Lethal has got to be approaching that seven trips to the box mark. Well, if we know that if we know that this is the third time she's intentionally gonna her her third seat, as it would be, uh, you know, if she's depending on how many majors she's got, this could be her third that's compiled from minors, and I don't know how many majors she has. Yeah, you're right, she's probably pushing the envelope. But we've got Wheezy jamming for Cincinnati and Zote stepping up for Brew City once again. Cincinnati oh, in the no. black, not the Wheezy Zote match. Cincinnati in the black. And Bru every Bruce announcer's City in the gold. nightmare. But uh, it's 100 to 95. We are on an official timeout, and I just want to give another quick shout out to Hinkley uh, Hinkley Design. Design. Thank you. They're doing. They're shooting the video for us today. They also. They're also going to be burning the DVDs. So if you're watching us, we are getting. Uh, you're getting it via Hinkley Design. And you can also find a link directly below the video feed where you can order your own DV of this amazing tournament so far. What do you think, Bob? Well, yeah, I tell you, it's really been a good day. We've seen we've seen a couple of we've a lopsided uh, bouts, but it's all paid off in the last two or three bouts, which has really been tight. Uh, Naptown actually uh, it comes back. It keeps looks like they uh, might be mounting a comeback against uh, Windy City before Windy City kind of breaks it open at the end. Uh, then we see Minnesota upset Detroit, and we're looking at a very, very close 4-5 match right here, as, as one would expect based on the seating. Um, and this is, this is going to be a barn burn. I don't know exactly what that means. Why would one burn a good barn? Okay, th this, is, this is very interesting because uh, we saw Kay Lethal in, uh, in the position to take an intentional minor, but the, the referees actually on that official timeout have now sent Kay Lethal to the box. So, but I'm not. It's not clear if that was for a, a major or a minor that she got in the in a previous jam, in or in one of the previous jams. Uh, sometimes it does. There is a log, occasionally logistical delays that uh, that delay minors getting accumulated. Uh, you know, sometimes they just come in so fast and furious, and the, yeah, and the NSOs no, right. keep up most of the time. And you know, but sometimes it, this happens. But I mean, if it was a minor, that was what she wanted to happen anyway. So yeah, really, no no pain uh, on no, that one. No. no. In fact, I mean, she actually uh, buys a couple of seconds that way because she doesn't have that delay from the from the behind the jammer line to the penalty box. But here we go. We've got uh, Zote jamming and quickly moving up to the front of the pack. We've got Skater Skater Kini Skater Kinney and Jung and, and and no, sorry, that's Hannah Alto Cinco at the front of the pack. But Carrie Hacksaw comes in and breaks up that two wall. Yeah. Skater Kinney moves past the twenty foot mark. Oh no, she she reels back in and is able to hit. Zote and keep her in the pack, so nice defense, but nevertheless, we oh, unable to leverage. make any progress. Oh, I thought, it looked for sure like Carrie Hacks ahead was going to have the leverage on her. She slides off, uh, and she ends up having to pull back, but just get Zote through anyway. Once in a while, you just got to be about a two, a blip, two blink distraction, and uh, that's, all, that's all that really need to be accomplished. 
But nevertheless, Bruce City working that four-on-two advantage in the pack and holding back Wheezy all the way until uh, until Zote Just gets through so the long. pack. Pull back Wheezy. 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 <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm actually a little bit nervous. I don't know if that's politically correct to say it that way. <laughs> you know, how, it's well. a, it's classic television. Okay, now now here's what we're, we we get. we saw the jam called off. The Zote picking up uh, picking up four more points for Bruce City unanswered by Cincinnati, and now we see Kay Lethal in in the intentional minor position. So it looks that was that must have been a major because otherwise she would not be. Uh, be in this position to pick up that intentional minor. Uh, at, at this point, you know, you, you have to think that that's what it is. But man, that's a lot of sit time. Uh, you know, you only get seven <laughs> trips. You only get seven trips, and then after that, you get your frequent fly, flyer uh, mileage as right, a boot, right the, out the door. And the reward is yeah, a trip yeah, to the locker room. Exactly, a free trip to the locker room. Uh, but that's never. True. Well, you know, we have a lot of nice sponsors that make up. And, and and she has been one of the most effective jammers for Cincinnati. So, uh, so I mean, I, I, I wish we could find out exact the total count right now. But anyway, we've got Skittle jamming. We haven't seen her jam in a while. And she's going to be, she is jamming against Trauma. Trauma, not didn't, not as effective as she would have liked to be on the last time she was out to jam. Uh, but they're, gonna, they're fielding her nice again. Nice and Skittle, nice work. That was that was the pack. That was the Bruce City, uh, the Bruce City blockers opening up that hole and taking advantage of that four on two, that four on two defense. It's the penalties killing Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah, they, absolutely. They opened it up. She's a little nice stuck under the last potential hit. And right now, Skittle, who, as you are correct, struggled a little bit in the first half on one or two jams, um, showing that she certainly has the speed, the skill, and and she's in her first year. And, you know, it's all going to come together when she's got the open field and she's got the site, she's got the holes open up for her. She can certainly make big plays happen. Now, yeah, interesting. Skittle actually had trauma in her sights, but trauma, one of the, got, got to say, one of the one of the top blockers, in my opinion, for Cincinnati. So Skittle was actually clo getting close, could have picked up at one more lap point, but probably a wise decision not to try and get past trauma on the jammer, uh, on jammer, on jammer, and pick up that one. It was one point not worth getting a hip check and maybe even a major penalty. You well, gotta, uh, always consider. yeah, no, uh, in that particular situation, it was it was probably the best thing to do. We're gonna see Betty but, the Butcher and high D voltage jamming for Bruce City and trauma stepping right back in as jammer. That was a short jam and she didn't actually get far out of the pack. So probably not winded, but high D voltage, nevertheless, out just out racing skater Kenny and uh, Karma Crash at the front of the pack for Cincinnati and getting out, but she is not the lead jammer. So if Trauma can get past an extremely tenacious and for and, and imposing the uh, Bruce City defense, which she has not had any success yet. Bruce City's just surrounding her, just a, uh, a sea of gold. But you know what? Right there, little justice uh, serving justice strays a little bit. Actually, things had kind of opened up, but you know what? When you got uh, lead jam, you can make you can make all those dreams come to an end. But but Bruce City consistently putting points, getting positive differentials against Cincinnati in the last the last three or four jams in a row, extending that lead 95 to 111, 16 points now separating the two teams with Bruce City on top. And guess who's jamming for Cincinnati? Uh, let me guess. I bet uh, fresh off her <laughs> minute, uh, her minute rest time. It's gonna be Kate Lethal. I'm against Carrie A. Hacksaw with a clean slate. I'm sure of minors. Kay Lethal dodge <laughs> jumps to the outside, but then gets caught up by Grace Kelly and a double team from Romaniac. Did and you see that? Hacksaw almost got her. Hacksaw almost put her out of bounds just before. Like, oh, what happened there? That, oh, that was a nice move by Kay Lethal around the outside. Almost caught by Romaniac. And we actually saw Romaniac's knee, the knee, knee the pad. shell. Oh, there's, came out. The, okay. That's right. The, the shell on the knee pad came off. So, <laughs> But she is going to the penalty box. Possibly a low block uh, called on her. Uh, because there was knee contact, and that was uh, uh, that was initiated by Romaniac and caught uh, and caught Kay Lethal's uh, Kay Lethal's leg as she was passing by. Yeah, I, you know the low block we often see is, I, you know, obviously it's one of those things that you, you don't want to undercut somebody, but more times than not when they occur, it's just people are down on the ground and sliding at that point. Uh, it's not like you see very many intentional baseball slides or trying to cut somebody, undercut somebody. As much as you just see an accident happen and somebody fly around, and, that's and, right. And but cut, but cut them that way. But taken very seriously, and the rules do err oh, yeah. on the side of you, caution and, gotta, and safety. It's, it's a so call. That, it's still it's still a violation. Doesn't matter. That's we right. We cannot so, measure intent. 
that, we that's can, right. We, we only measure action. impact. Uh, and, and and in the case, you know, even if it, even if it looks like an accident, well, you know, there are actually possibly you know. I was an accident. There, there, you know, there are some Oscar uh, candidates out there, uh, you know, occasionally, you know. So, you know, they, I mean, okay, every now and then, you know, there are the rules uh, uh, do and uh, do allow for uh, uh, an automatic major in the case of a skater falling down. But the referees are on to it in, in some cases. So it's not, just because a skater goes down, they don't call a major. But uh, no. You know, and, and some sometimes a I, I, I think what, I, are you need. are you alluding to the fact that there are people who might actually pretend to act what, what they call Take I think advantage taking of the letter a foul, of the rule? No, like no. <laughs> no, drawing a foul could are you saying doing a Carl Malone a flop? That's right. I was about uh, to I was yeah, about to mention right. that. We, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's not a new concept. We see it in basketball no. all the time. No. So, uh, What's so Carl Malone's history tape. That's right. Put up a lot of points. Man, but with flop. low blocking, there times. usually involves the knees. That's a very dangerous area for especially for a skater. Uh, especially since you have that extra, you know, it's like falling down on high heels. You know, there's just extra injury components. <laughs> <come on. laughs> and and how would you know what that is like? Oh, you haven't you haven't seen me in my in my six inch pumps? Oh, please. <laughs> oh man. You got to Don't them send out. the photos. <laughs> <laughs> is red cocktail dress actually be your color? Go with your eyes. Okay, well, we are uh, 15 minutes into the second half, so 15 Spaghetti minutes strats. left in the game. And I just want uh, a big shout out to Fast Girl Skates, by the way. That she, they are the they are the presenting sponsor for DNN's coverage of the of the North Central Regional Tournament. Fast Girl Skates. You can go to them at fa- www.fastgirlskates.com, or if you're in Seattle, drop on by. They're the first brick and mortar uh, skate shop owned and run by uh, by skaters. Stop in and tell uh, La Petite Mort. And Wiley Peyote, hi, and just or just come in to chat. You know, they love to talk derby. They love to talk about the gear. Do they like and coffee? They know their stuff. Everybody in Seattle loves coffee. They make. I, I gotta say, you, you always get good coffee in Seattle. There's yeah, no yeah. question. No, I mean, seriously. You know, it is it's cliche, not, but you can't really get crappy coffee like you can in Wisconsin. You can get some really, really bad coffee. In fact, I think where we're staying. Probably well, exemplifies. If you, if you mail order coffee. coffee, if you're in Seattle and you mail order coffee from Wisconsin, you can get bad coffee in <laughs> Seattle. <laughs> well, well, we'll make sure that Folgers just comes right in. Not saying that Folgers is always bad, but we can prepare it really poorly. Okay, but uh, uh, but another quick shout out to Five on Five Magazine, the official magazine of the Women's Flat Track Derby Association. You can subscribe now at Five on Five Mag they are a great su- supporter of the Derby News Network, the DNN. That is the network that you are watching. And the feed brought to you by Hinkley Design. Exactly. Hink- and and don't forget to check that, that that link at the bottom of the screen. You can buy a DVD of this great tournament. Yep. And they turn those around in a hurry. They did the East here a couple of years. Did the East in Madison a couple of years ago. Beautiful, beautiful footage. Okay, and actually, right now we're we've seen that official timeout uh, uh, get completed, get withdrawn, and we're seeing something we haven't seen in a while. We're seeing an advantage in the pack by Cincinnati, three on two right now, two blockers for Bruce City in the sequel in their wheels and roughing the passer in the penalty box for Cincinnati. No, you're absolutely right. It's a good call there, Bulldog, because it has been all Milwaukee since about the first or second jam of the second half, and right now. Uh, it's certainly Cincinnati. They're going to be able to take advantage of that. Yes, they are. Yep. Hannah Ocho Cinco breaking out of the pack. It looked like Shakira was going to just catch her at the front of the pack, but she got held back by Newcomb and forced out. And now it looks like Shakira heading to the penalty box. That is Hannah Ocho Cinco out front with lead jammer status for Cincinnati. Cincinnati trying to jump back into this yeah, game. Still plenty think, of time on I the clock. I think Karma Crash had to pull an elbow out of the side of her ear. <laughs> oh, big <laughs> sternum check from oh. Newcomb on rejected soul. And it's going to be rejected. Oh, it looks like both skaters going through the penalty box. Now uh, I'm, I'm a little curious about that because you can't because that was I only saw the one action, but possibly two. But nevertheless, we've got. Uh, well, no, it looks. I'm, I'm guessing that Re- rejected soul must have committed a, a, her own penalty separate because I saw the counterclockwise block that was called on Newcomb. Uh, but that was uh, Rejected Soul also in the penalty box. And Hannah Ocho Cinco breaks through for a grand slam on the power jam. Yeah, and it doesn't get any easier for Bruce City at the moment as Cat Scratch Fever is also sad down. They have her in a stranglehold. 
Well, Maybe. stranglehold no more. Two more blockers going to the penalty box, and that's going to be three. One of them is going to get waved off. That's going to be rough in the passer. She still owes him in it, but this is this is the last thing that Cincinnati wants to see is another stream of penalty of skaters going to the penalty box. Yeah, absolutely, and the wave off doesn't help at all because that by the time you slow down and you speed up again and go around, it kills you. And skater Kinney also sent off the, off to the penalty box. Now, she's not going to get waved off because it looks like Newcomb standing up and she's going to be coming back in so that she's going to get a seat. But up in the passer still owes a penalty. Yeah, rejected soul coming back. Off, off, <laughs> shook me there for a second as one girl's coming off the track. Another one is trying to get back on it. They almost, almost clipped each other. But in, in spite of all that chaos with, uh, with Cincinnati skaters just in a... Get, just a steady stream going through the penalty box. And nevertheless, Hannah Altrosinko able to put 15 points on the board and bring it to within three points. So even with that disadvantage of all those skaters going to the penalty box and even only having one blocker on the track for several laps, there's Hannah Altrosinko comes through for the ladies in black. Cincinnati coming to within three points of Bruce City. But now we've got high D voltage jamming for Bruce City. And look at that, K, K lethal. Yep. Stepping back in. She's, and got, one or, she's got one or, uh, one or two more shots at sitting down yet, apparently. Uh, official, another official timeout. Uh, let's hit another one of our sponsors. Thank another one of our sponsors. Well, you know, it's always easy for me because I'm going to go right back and say, you know, you always start always start your thanks with where things got started. And since it was, of course, the very first sponsor, original sponsor that uh, took uh, that DNN was able to, to uh, work with. And... Um, of course, we're going to buy skates. Buy skates from a skater. Oh, of course. Go to SinCitySkates.com. You know, Trish, Ivana, they'll, they'll, they'll hook you up. They'll, they'll hook you up with a nice deal. And, you know, Trish, it could be a hard closer on that one. <laughs> yeah, she's not going to let you out of there. And I'm, you know, I love Trish, but Trish, I'm not going to say no. Not a shrinking violet. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say no to Trish. Cause, you know. But knows her, knows her stuff, more importantly. Oh, yeah. At SinCitySkates.com. We love Buy those skates guys. from a skater. Okay, out of the chaos, we have both teams with two blockers in the penalty box. Oh, and it looks like rough in the passer. She went to her bench, but she still owed a minute. And the referees caught that. She, so she was required to get back on the track. Oh. And she, but she's going to wait for a seat to open up. So who do we got jamming? Kay Lethal. And how? Oh, another power jam for oh, Cincinnati. Heidi, Heidi Voltage going to the penalty box. Oh, I tell you, it just a slew of brutal plays and, and, and things going on through the pack. It's like a domino effect of, of people getting knocked down and knocked up knocked in the face you got somebody else fall on the backside over here and uh i, I think it's starting to get a little uh, probably a little frustration a little starting to come out of both of these teams well i'm seeing the advantage in the pack going back and forth now you know what i haven't seen is rough in the passer heading to the penalty there she goes okay because she came in and briefly cincinnati had three blockers on the track but rough in the passer owed a penalty from uh, all the way from almost two minutes ago in the last jam uh so she's heading to the penalty box but now we've got Skater Kinney coming back onto the track. So it is, and also, and also Cat Scratch Fever. So it's going to be three on three in the pack. But still, Cincinnati on the power jam. Here comes Kaylee on a scoring pass. Dodges around Be Becky the Butcher. Cookie Chiano gets and Cookie Chano gets position on her. Cat Scratch Fever gets a piece of her. But Kaylee is going to get out of the pack and picking up only four. Re referee only calling calling only four. Oh, she must. It looks yeah. like she cut minor the track. Cut. Minor. Minor Which cut. is good for her. That's right. <laughs> because, you know, with as many penalties, as many, that's right, yeah, especially we, for We Katie. don't know what the count is, but we know she's pushing the end of the envelope here. She's getting close. Now, time time is running short, so the and more nice time comes off the break. clock, the less impact uh, an, an expulsion will have, especially for prob probably the strongest jammer. And there it is, another four points for Kay Lethal. And now Cincinnati in the lead. Cincinnati in the, has taken the lead. A series of jammer penalties has ta has given Cincinnati back the momentum and the advantage in spite of being short on the numbers in the pack. And I tell you, that's really good. That's really great communication between Quad Almighty and uh, Kay Lethal there. If she's looking up. She's looking at him, and they're she's watching not only the points but the time. You know, the one thing we've really seen in this last year or two, our uh, our teams and leagues catching on to. How important it is to kill time kill when you get towards the end of a bout. Uh, obviously, here it's a little more difficult because it's, it, it, the, the score is, is really tight. But as long as you're in the lead, if, if you can go ahead and wear a couple of more seconds off the clock, go ahead and do it. 
And now we've got we've got the Brucey Bruisers burning up a second timeout. So we've got a one. It appears to be one timeout left for each team. Bruce City Bruisers lost the momentum there for several jams in a row with jammers and blockers going to the penalty box. <laughs> and what I got to point out that I mean, in spite of that, it was a. I mean, Cincinnati was on the power jam, but most of that, that those power jams, uh, they had two or three power jams in a row. But on most of those power jams, they were actually at a disadvantage in the in the in the pack. Yeah. So great yeah, job right. by by the by Cincinnati coming back and converting those. That was a, that's a, that's an uphill climb on the yeah. power jam. Yep. No, you're absolutely right. I think there's been uh, there's really been squandered opportunity on the power jams with both teams here today. We've seen we've seen a couple of them that are just textbook the way they handle it, and then the next one comes along, and the, 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 we've seen the jammers cut right into the wrong part of the track, absolutely get trapped in a play where they had an advantage. And uh, right now, the two of them out there talking a little bit, having a little fun. And we're starting a three-on-one Bruce City advantage with Roof and the Passer standing in the penalty box and two of her teammates, two of, two of the other blockers, sitting in the penalty box. So, tra so Trauma, the only blocker on the track, and she's just going to skate away, trying to get away from the from the Bruce City pack. The shovel, the shovel right Hanau. there with a good call. That's a good Skittle call. and Hanau, and another power jam for Cincinnati. So Bruce City coming apart at the seams just a little bit here, starting to anyway. Yeah, I mean, both jammers going to the turn. It, 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 she winds up kind of losing control and kind of undercutting her again. It was, uh, I don't, you know, it, it's just one of those it, one of those things. It was it was a bad tactic. She, she should say tactic because I did not say she did out of purpose, but she came in with too much steam, lost control, took out the other jammer, and now she gets to think about it. Now, not, nice effort by Carrie Hacksaw, but Hannah Alchocinco able to get out of the pack. It gets past Carrie Hacksaw uh, when she hits that 20-foot mark. And here she is on a scoring pass. That's Moby Nips has position. Grace Kelly moving in. Now a three-wall. Carrie Hacksaw joining in the fun. And uh, <laughs> rough in the pass. They're trying to, to break open the back of the pack. But they are – the Bruce City has, has – is what is that? That's like a, that's like a bees on a wasp. <laughs> you, you, you know, wasps are way bigger than bees, but you know how bees get... I'll, I'll tell you next yeah, time we have yeah, an official timeout. Yeah, if you really want to know. Is this a bird from the bees camera? It's not a Discovery like Channel that. one. Right. But, that, but trust me, it looked a lot like that. <laughs> Even the same colors. <laughs> stop. Bees with the uh, golden... Stop. Yeah, stop, all right. Stop. Enough. Enough <laughs> education. We're here to talk about Derby. Skittles, oh no! Uh, she no. cut the track. Uh, she, you can Two. cut because you can cut it to the outside too. She just got out of the penalty box um. and straight back in. Another major cutting, and just uh, Cincinnati is just has just been getting the advantage uh, yeah, of yeah, I, over I'm, and over and over. Of it was it was kind of kind of hard to see. It was on the far end of the track. I'm guessing that uh, they're claiming that she, she was bumped out of bounds uh, to the outside this time. Okay, and came oh. back in. Interesting. Uh, inter I just want to make a note that according to the scoreboard, they did show that uh, Bruce City took a timeout, but Bruce City still shows that too. Once again, it may have been a situation where uh, they challenge the ref the head referee says yes, you're you agrees with them, and with his discretion, uh, chooses to not charge them with a timeout. So, sometimes they'll just basically kind of look at you like it's you know you can't. No, that one was concrete. You know, and, then and they'll, also like, sometimes they'll the save, and they'll save it. For and also sometimes the scoreboard is just in error, but uh, but uh, but according to the scoreboard right now, two timeouts, and that could be crucial in the la in the final minutes of the game. Uh, but a K lethal swing and around like a little quickly. like a little backward line dancing there for a second. I got to tell you the pack the pack at full strength wow. right now, which we haven't seen in a while. So that's Skittle sitting in the penalty box all by her lonesome. But that's cat scratch. I'm sorry, but that was cat scratch fever, fever and serving justice. With a, just a brutal, brutal, what looked like a brutal hit on Kay Lethal. That was, thought, a, was up like it was no big deal. Rejected Soul getting some hits in there and now sitting in the penalty box as well. So it's four on three in the pack. But at a standstill. Oh, and this is this looks there like Kay Lethal heading to the penalty box. And now we're I'm on pins and needles because like is this the one? Is this the one? But we've got, we're gonna have a jammer switch out. And Whoa. No, no, we're not. Excuse me. Skittle gets out of the penalty box. Before before uh, Kay Lethal gets to the penalty box, uh, the whistle just is not stopping right now. There are people being shuffled off in mass. 
Okay, um, and Skittle, and Skittle make, making a move. She's got to get around quick because we have less than half. We have a half, 30 seconds left on the jam. Oh! Part. And there she is. Serving justice. Now, Sorry about that. A crushing blow. <laughs> Very well. Oh, my god. Very goodness. well done. Skater Kinney taking the brunt of the mass, wow. a massive check from Serving Justice. And that's five points on the board. Finally putting some more points on the board for, for Bruce City. And she's still coming around again. She's time running short in the jam, so she's got to move. And she, but she's got to pass. There's only one skater, Kinney, only skater, and she's not going to run out of time. And she had to pass. Oh, no, no, excuse me. You know what? She passed the skater out of bounds. I actually thought, I briefly thought that the, that uh, that's uh, a wormhole that, opened up and we jumped to a different part of the space. June time. with a cleaver, number twenty-one. I like that, yeah. I thought I actually thought she was going to the penalty box, which meant that uh, that she wouldn't count as a skater pass since she was on her way. Since she was technically out of play, uh, and, you know, with respect to getting points, and you have to score at least one point to get ghost points. But no, Skittle did Skittle did pass her while she was out of bounds and still, but still legally in play uh, according to points passing. And therefore, she got all those ghost points. There you go. And I tell you, that's about the only points you'd ever see me be able to accumulate, and that's only if the person I had to pass was sitting down. But uh, obviously, that plays huge, especially in a game like this. Okay, There's so many penalties. This is what Bruce City has been capable of all night if they have a jammer on the track. High D voltage getting out of the pack, and K Lethal stuck behind a solid wall of Bruce City blockers. And here we go, K Lethal getting out, but here comes Tidy Voltage breaking through the pack, pounding her own hole open through the pack. Yeah, I, I, very well put because she she leveraged herself really well coming out of that fourth turn. She's got two people leaning up against her that fall over. And she shakes them off and she puts points on the board. And right now we're looking at a three point spread. Three point spread with but just five minutes left in the game. <laughs> this is. Let's shape it up to be another three very exciting games in a row. 133 to 130. Bruce City just three points behind Cincinnati, but they've been uh, going at it all oh, night. Dude, look at this. It's Kay Lethal. She's got a poodle. <laughs> She's uh, going to take another intentional minor. So we're. Uh, <laughs> that's. I'm, that's. That, that is what, four that we've seen intentionally, I think? Maybe five? I don't know. But I mean, I'm, I'm, we have. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm yeah, sure they, they all know on the floor, on. but yeah. I, I would say she's she can't have more than she's got to have one more left. It can't. Well, two yeah, well, at the most. Well, I mean the re the referees will get that straightened out if that's the case. But Hannah Alto Cinco, oh, oh no, no, my, rejected soul comes around turn four and just stumbled, almost does a backflip. And Hannah Alto Cinco comes in right behind her, gets out first for lead jammer. Looked like that rejected soul saw that was life. rejected body and soul. That's oh right. my <laughs> god, what a hit she ends up taking. I tell you, this is one of those games where there's so much riding on this right now. There's a lot of emotion uh, with Cincinnati. Uh, Bruce City trying to break through and make it through their first first-round victory here. And uh, we are seeing – this is the hardest now, hitting I've go. seen in We're a long time. Possibly another tactical error. Possibly even a crucial tactical error it comes back to bite them. But uh, Hannah Alcho Cinco that was lead, is lead jammer. They didn't call it off. Rejected Souls gets through, matches her four points. So now Hannah Alcho Cinco – Doing the same business. She had four points advantage, a plus four di differential. Oh! And nice work. Uh, now we're going to wait and see. Hannah she, calls it. she just called it right now. Had a plus four, and now she's going to get only one. Yeah. She had yeah, a plus four, yeah. had lead jammer, could have called it off before her yeah. gets in there. Could have gotten a plus four, only ends up with a plus one. A little communication error there or something, but... Well, I mean, we can we can stand up here, but in the heat of the moment, you can't you can't. Uh, I mean, we can't criticize too much unless we're out there ourselves. You know, in the heat of the moment, you can lose you can lose concentration briefly. But I mean, from from our ten thousand foot uh, viewpoint, or it was, know, more like it about fifteen was, yeah, foot yeah, viewpoint. Yeah, yeah it was. Can, can it it should have she should have gotten through, and it, the safe bet would have been to get through and, and call it off. That's right. So we could have had another three points. So you got to no one to hold them. You well, gotta know when to fold them. Yeah, well, I mean that that could be a heartbreaker if Cincinnati ends up ends up uh, losing by a margin that cover that that three points covers. But here we go, carry a hacksaw, dodging right around right around Newcomb gets through it, and then uh, Bruce City with a coverage on the front of the pack, and she carry a hacksaw picks up lead jammer. And here comes Kay Lethal. Kay Lethal still in the game, by the way. Yeah, I tell you, carry a hacksaw. What one of my favorite players in the country. Such an amazing, amazing scanner. She's going to get through. She's going to get the point. She's calling it off. She's like, where's the whistle? 
And there's four points. That's going to tie it up right here with just two. Oh, excuse me. Oh, we were so I saw a side view. It looked like four points. It looked like four points, but it's only going to be. Oh, no. Uh, actually, I think it was four points, but. Uh, Kay Lethal looks like she picked up. Well, that a was the of it was that was the, <laughs> that was the that's what they were looking for was because by it never ends. Remember until the fourth whistle blows, and that that four whistles started just just a tad of a second behind what when she called it off. But of course the refs got to be able to see. Uh, they got to be able to, to know that you're calling the gem off before the whistles start blowing. But arguably, uh, Carrie Hacksaw got, started calling off. Right as her hips hit that front most, uh, that front most Cincinnati yep. blocker. So I mean, a- execution wise, I think she got hit on the nose. She hit it. She hit it. She did exactly what she enough. had to do. Yep. Just fast enough. Yep. But we're gonna have a oh no, we uh, score adjustment. No, that was <laughs> no, yeah, that that is a oh, correction no. because she only picked up four yeah. points, not five. It was one hundred thirty four to one hundred thirty eight going into that jam, and she did not pick up that let jammer point because Kay Lethal was right, as you know, was right behind her scoring points. Uh, so Kay Lethal picked up two. And, uh, and, uh, you yeah, are a Hacksaw nuclear up scientist. Carrie Hacksaw picked up four. <laughs> so it's a two point game, two point game, 138 to 140. And you going dream in. dream about this stuff. Just, just under, just under one, uh, just under two minutes left in the game. And we've got a nail biter here. And we've got high D voltage going up against Hannah Alto Cinco. And look at that. This time Cincinnati on the on the high end of the pack advantage four on two and, and, this, could, and this could be the final jam. It, it could be that that it could very well could be if they if she just lets the clock run out without losing uh, without losing ground to Heidi Voltage and of course if Heidi Voltage get, catches up to her she can always and stall. Heidi Voltage is going to break through the pack and she's got. We're going to have to see the pack always being the gong with the equalizer. Oh, and look at that. Oh. Nips comes in and cuffs oh. Papa Panna. That's going to be wow. a no scoreless jam, calling it off from the from the ground. And that's going to be just over a minute. And we're going to see. I'm expecting, I, I would expect a time. Yeah, it looks like a timeout is called. No, uh, no, excuse me. The timeout's now at one and one. Uh, so I, I, I spoke out of turn there. Uh, so both teams with one timeout left. But Carrie Hacksaw is going to jump right in. And they're going to let the clock go. Possibly a tactical error by, by Bruce City. Not using that timeout. Because if they can get through, get get lead jammer, get a, quick, a few quick points on the board, call off the jam, they can get another jam in. Or if they if they get ahead, they can actually uh, they can actually let the clock run out. You know, So this is an opportunity for Bruce City. But Cincinnati still looking strong. And Kay Lethal still playing. <laughs> yeah. The, the only person that hasn't. Managed to figure out how to be ejected this weekend. Okay, well, there, there it is. Bruce he did, does call a timeout. So Bruce City calling a timeout right now. Clock frozen at 52 seconds. And still just two-point game, three games in a row. Don't you wish you were here, folks? Well, you know, you could almost be here. But if you're watching DNN on Hinkley Design, you could also watch it on, on DVD and replay these last three bouts have been so exciting. Just and, one after another. And the thing is, you're going to be here. You want to be here this time of year because it's really not that cold game. And we are across the street from Lambeau Field, man. That's exciting. Uh, and while we have time, we have a quick shout out to Cruz Skate Shop, Derby owned in San Francisco. They they have a new Sacramento location that opens September seventeenth, just in time for Western Regional. That's awesome! That. I'm so and happy. And we've got for the uh, online. They're online at cruzskateshop.com. That's K- C R U Z skateshop.com. But look at that, Kay Lethal coming out, Lee Jammer, and this could very well seal the game. Yeah, you? exactly. She, she she shot through that. Pack. Oh, look at that, Kay Actor. So they're going to send her to the seat. And now, Kaylee, assuming everything is uh, everything is in order here, this is this is in the. Yeah. I mean, in fact, Kay Lethal taking a taking a big risk, even moving into the into the engagement zone. She could have just tailed the pack and and sealed the deal for Cincinnati. But Cincinnati, ten seconds left on the Perry clock, and there it is. Kay Lethal just kind of taking her time. That she's was not, that she's smart not right there. Don't even chance. get close to it. That's right. And she was taking a big risk because that was enough. If she had gotten, if she had made one tiny mistake, gotten a major. Oh, penalty, look at that! But it doesn't happen. There it is. Since Cincinnati has clinched victory in a very hard-fought game. All hats off to the Bruce City Bruisers. They came so close. It was a. They came in seated right behind Cincinnati, and they dominated. They really did dominate most of the first half. 
in spite of an early lead by, by Cincinnati. And then they come back. Cincinnati comes back fighting, but Bruce City fights right back, comes claws their way right back into it within two points, only to have uh, Kay Lethal, who was had to be so close to getting fouled out, Unbelievable. comes in and, and just seals the deal for Cincinnati, gets that crucial lead jammer at the at just at the right time, and just and just walks away with it. And that's this is what a great game, what a great finish, what a proud victory for Cincinnati. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Bruce City can ha- hold their heads high. Oh yeah, there's no question about that. I mean, Bruce City came out here and they showed that they they certainly had the talent to go up against a team uh, a, a team that was pretty strong competition for them. And uh, you know, unfortunately, sometimes when you haven't been through that, a lot of times you make mistakes. And that's that's really all it came down to was they probably made a few more critical mistakes at at really times that played into their favor and weren't able to cash in in as uh, cash in on quite as many points as they as they would have hoped. But yeah, a, a terrific performance either way you look at it. I'll tell you, it was, uh, penalties playing such a big factor. I, ironically, oh, the one penalty that we were so expecting to happen <laughs> did never happen. Yeah. That was that seventh mate, that seventh strip to the box for Kay Lethal. Who well, ended we gotta up go, with, we gotta go see how close she was. Right. That, that but be, nevertheless, that was penalty. a no scratch away right there. Cincinnati having a steady stream of blockers to the penalty box, but the crucial factor. Jammers going to the penalty box for Bruce City Bruisers and giving away all those power jams and allowed Cincinnati to catch back up. But uh, congratulations to Cincinnati and to all the teams. This was a very exciting roller, uh, day of roller derby. And just uh, want to very quickly thank a couple more sponsors for DNN. We've got Rockstar Skates. They're derby owned in St. Louis. You can get free shipping on any order over $50 this weekend. But you've got to use coupon code DNN, all caps, at rockstarskates.com. Skates. Rockstar Skates. And, of course, we also want to say thank you to Derby for All. Derby owned in Minneapolis, ready to serve you online at Derby number four. A-L-L dot com. But any last thoughts on uh, today's derby action, Bob? Wow. Uh, that's about all I got left in me is, wow. We just sat through, really, the whole second half of the day was just incredible. Uh, you're not always, you, don't, you never know what you're going to get when you come to a tournament. This one really seemed like it could shape up to have some really terrific matchups, and it's, that's exactly what we got. We got what we wish for. I can't complain. Uh, you just don't have an afternoon like that very often. So glad to be here. This is Bulldog signing off, and thank you, Bob Noxious, my uh, lovely co-host. Oh, thank you. <laughs> lovely, you are gracious. Bye, Bob Noxious. I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks to everybody at DNN. Thanks to uh, Bruce City Bruisers, and you're watching Thunder on the Tundra. This is DNN.